patient with abdominal pain is often quite a challenge for the simple reason that uh, abdomen has multiple organs inside and literally every organ can be a, the origin of abdominal pain now to complicate the picture the pattern of abdominal pain can have overlapping features and decision to whether to empirically treat and see or you need to go ahead with an evaluation depends on the way in which you approach the patient in history as in any other symptoms you have a set of sub questions for abdominal pain the first being the patient characteristics which includes the age the gender and whether the patient is having any prior history of similar abdominal pain which could put the patient into specific conditions which can recur like um, gallbladder pain or a urinary colic or pancreatitis and also certain disorders which can make them more vulnerable for specific causes like pancreatitis and um, peptic ulcer the second will be the duration of the abdominal pain then comes the onset whether it is gradual in onset or rapid in onset and how does it progress does it fluctuate in the severity or does it keeps on increasing or it improves over a period of time the place where the pain is felt and the character the way in which the patient describes the abdominal pain as burning or dull aching or stabbing or sometimes the patient may not be able to clearly explain the character whether it's radiating or not like to the back or to the lower part of the abdomen any specific factors which aggravates or relieves the pain and of course the associated symptoms now the order can be um interchanged it can be asked in whichever way you prefer but these are the components which should be obtained to conclusively decide on what could be the reason for the symptom now i've kept around eight patient scenarios now what i'll request is to pause the slide for some time go through the patient scenarios for a few minutes and then please listen to the explanation what i'll be giving so this will be the first slide which includes four patient scenarios you can pause it and see it first please note down your possible explanation for the symptom of the patient then you have another four patient and you can similarly note down your impression in a piece of paper so that you can compare your approach with the perhaps the ideal approach now patient 1 and patient 2 are, are relatively similar because it's a long standing pain for about 2 months or 3 months gradual onset the first one is static but the second one is progressive the location is upper abdomen the major difference is with the food so both patient 1 and patient 2 the pain is related to food for the first patient the fasting aggravates while food or water relieves so patient has a tendency to have Um, frequent food and therefore a gain in the weight whereas the second patient the food is aggravating and therefore the patient tends to fast more and it is often associated with vomiting when the patient attempts to take food and there is loss of weight due to inadequate food intake now both are ulcer pains the first one is a duodenal ulcer where food will improve the pain because uh, the neutralization of the acid in the stomach prevents the acid contact or brings down the amount of acid contact with the duodenal ulcer whereas the gastric ulcer will be aggravated by acid acid in the stomach and therefore the first one is duodenal ulcer the second one is gastric ulcer the third one is a relatively shorter duration pain of for 10 days located in the 
again upper abdomen or more closely in the chest retrosternal region and what you need to look here is that it is radiated to the throat and it's a nocturnal pain which is aggravated by oily food or coffee now oil containing food can actually slow down the gastric emptying and things like coffee can uh, and alcohol can decrease the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter the patient attempts to take antacids or water so that it uh, the pain comes down so this pattern of pain which is predominantly nocturnal or food related to food which is retrosternal and radiating to the throat is indicative of a reflux esophagitis or gastroesophageal reflux disease now patient 4 is an acute onset pain for a very short duration progressive and what you can see that it looks like the severity is more it's not permitting him to sit or walk no specific relieving factors it's complicated by vomiting and it radiates to the back now in this particular scenario the patient characteristics becomes important because these alcoholic patients are are at risk for two important causes of abdominal pain one is a benign condition which is just an alcoholic gastritis due to injury to the mucosa and the second is acute pancreatitis so this is more suggestive of acute pancreatitis because the pain is radiating to the back the patient 5 again an acute duration pain upper abdominal right sided pain in a female in the fourth decade of fifth decade of life who is obese you should think of gallbladder pathology the calculus complication which can happen is calculus cholecystitis because they are more prone for occurrence of gallstones now it may radiate sometimes it may radiate to the shoulder it may radiate to the epigastric region the radiation is variable but movement aggravates it so similar to acute pancreatitis pain this could be a relatively a more severe pain localized to the right upper part of the abdomen the sixth patient again an acute pain which is occurring intermittently it's there for only for a short duration It's again localized in the upper abdomen, but more so towards the back, and it radiates to the groin. So this pattern of radiation from the back side of the abdomen to the front of the abdomen, the lower part of the front side of the abdomen, indicates some kind of a moving structure which is causing uh, this kind of a pain, and this is usually the pattern in. ureteric colic so the stone which is there in the urine the calculi it causes this pattern of radiation of the pain though the radiation is not always required sometimes it can manifest as just a fixed pain in the uh, right uh, loin region or just in the back patient 7 again an acute pain an intermittent pain a central cramping pain most of us would have experienced this is not radiating food increases the pain and passing stools relieves the pain a typical presentation of uh, colitis involving the small bowel which which often hap- happens in acute diarrheal illness so that scenario is relatively straightforward but this uh, pattern can be the initial presentation many other intra abdominal causes of abdominal pain like sometimes people who suffer from pancreatic pathology or gallbladder pathology or even renal pathology they may have a initial gastric upset which will be followed by a more definitive pattern of that particular pain so often this is due to infective colitis but it can confuse sometimes with other causes of abdominal pain the last patient again it's an acute pain which is progressive located to the right lower abdominal part so any pain in the right lower part of the abdomen we think of structures originating from the pelvis or in the lower part of the um large bowel or even small bowel can manifest so this pattern which radiates to the umbilicus which is aggravated by moving 
and associated with the loose stool so right lower pain in a male we often think in terms of either an acute appendicitis or an uretric colic or occasionally pain due to undescended um, testes which goes in for complication in a woman it becomes more broader because the pelvic structures come into the um, picture and therefore it can be due to uh, ovarian pathology or a fallopian tube pathology and occasionally an uterine pathology so looking at this picture you should definitely think of an acute appendicitis what i've done is just an overview about um, the abdominal pain it's more complicated than what has been described here and what is important in abdominal pain is the correct uh, uh, way of uh, ordering investigations there are situations where you don't do any tests like gastroesophageal reflux disease and you just treat them and see what's happening and there are situations where you evaluate them with ultrasonography there are situations where you just ask for an x-ray in the erect position and endoscopy at some instances so the pattern has to be relatively um clear for us to have a proper approach in diagnosing patients with abdominal pain you can view more videos on clinical medicine in this channel